Let's start with an awesome footage of Ukrainian BMP M2A2 Bradley fires a smokescreen at night during the fighting on the southern front. The occupiers have serious problems regarding the mode the Crimean bridge operates after the latest strikes. In view of the situation with smoke, the bridge is set for ventilation. That is why it sometimes closes and sometimes opens and does not work at full capacity. Some car lanes still function, but in a limited mode and exclusively for passenger transport. The railway operates according to a special mode is also very limited. The most powerful bridge artery of the Crimean bridge currently cannot provide full-fledged logistics and supplies to the Russian army, as well as other sick bridges, such as Changarsky and Genicheski. The vertical pillars are fixed to seabed on steel-reinforced plinths. However, the concrete piers, whilst steel-reinforced, have significant structural issues, probably due to corruption and breakneck speed construction deadlines. In fact, the company that constructed the bridge had never built a bridge previously. The distance to seabed under the bridge is very shallow, in fact, so shallow at 9 meters maximum that the larger cargo ships have insufficient draft to pass underneath. Below that, the piles supporting the bridge are only driven into 60 meters of silt rather than rock. Essentially, the seabed there is like jelly, and significant blast attack from either side on a plinth whilst unlikely to detach it from a pile into the seabed could certainly send it sideways taking the bridge spans above with it. The condition of the pillars may mean they may also be pulverized by a blast in close proximity below a span. The previous attempt saw a blast above the road spans, I believe. To hold the bridge in place, they needed to drive some piles into that jelly seabed in at angles as best as they could. Hitting a concrete pillar or two might be difficult from above, but an attack on the large plinths from surface marine drones laden with explosives or from air using storm shadow may yield a result. The Antonovsky Bridge was attacked with no more than HIMARS that just made small holes in it. Recently, Ukrainians surprised the world, as they have a great way of doing. With an attack on the Ivankare spy ship of the Russian Navy in the very distant southern Black Sea using marine drones. What was surprising apart distance that they now appear to be operating from, we assume somewhere like Odessa is that they have got much faster and so much larger carrying more explosive. In addition to attacking a plinth or two, the 227-meter span of the railway arch is another possibility, in my view, with storm shadow, as it would take a long time for Russia to rebuild and is very vulnerable. Most of the logistics, of course, entering Crimea does so via rail bridge rather than the road bridge. Soldiers of the 47th Separate Mechanized Brigade shot down an enemy K-52 helicopter in the Zaporizhia region on the morning of August 17th. In this way, the defenders of Ukraine already destroyed two Russian alligators that morning. The morning of the soldiers of the 47th Separate Mechanized Brigade began with the destruction of a Russian Ka-52 helicopter in the Robotyne district of Zaporizhia. The enemy alligator was spotted by the fire group of the Anti-Aircraft Missile and Artillery Division around 7.40 in the morning. The helicopter was shot down with one manpad's launch. American M58 Miklik remote demining installations are used on the front line in the Zaporizhia region. They allow you to break through a corridor in enemy minefields and move forward at least 100 meters. Such cars were first seen in Ukraine last year. Ukraine's energy minister, German Galushchenko, said Kiev will not join in talks with Russia about a renewal of the contract for the transit of Russian gas through Ukrainian territory, which is due to expire next year. Galushchenko said that chances were high that there would be no demand for Russian gas in European countries. 
Ukrainian engineers have developed special shoe overlays to protect the lives of sappers working on demining operations. After more than a year of Russian occupation of Mariupol, people there are still queuing up for free food. Meanwhile, Russian propaganda is spreading updates about a miraculous restoration of Mariupol. Russian Chief of Nuclear, Chemical and Biological Protection, Lieutenant General Igor Kirillov on Zvezda today. They, U.S., have a policy of global biological control. They understood that by creating artificial biological crises, they can rule the world. Ведь биологическое оружие, если посчитать, какой ущерб нанес ковид, то, наверное, за, ну, будем говорить, там, за два года, да? Ну, основная такая мире, пандемия, мире, да. два года шла. То даже ее нельзя сравнить с ущербом, который был во Вторую мировую войну. Это в десятки раз больше. Зато выгодоприобретатели той же Big Pharma, Вы имеете в виду фармацевтические да, все компании? Да, компании, которые в основном находятся у нас там в Соединенных Штатах, это там колоссальные. Как-то вот так. То есть вопрос? Вопрос стоит. Да. А, вопросы Ответ мы задаем. Понять. Мы даже мы же передаем документы. Вот э, характерна реакция Соединенных Штатов Америки, про которую мы говорим. Ни одного опровержения тем документам, которые мы предъявили, не было. Мы передали документы, это более, более наверное, двух тысяч листов в Организацию Объединенных Наций. Какой ответ пришел? А, ну, у нас, как правило, два ответа. Один ответ происходит в Соединенных Штатах Америки. А, у них же он стандартный. Все, что не делается... Все делается в интересах национальной безопасности Соединенных Штатов, и нам надо доверять. Слепо доверять. Да, слепо доверять. А, там политика глобального биологического контроля. Они поняли, что это работает, что посредством искусственно создаваемых э, таких кризисных ситуаций биологического характера можно управлять миром. Ведь ничего бесплатно они не делают. И даже поставляя каким-то государствам на безвозмездной основе, она не такая безвозмездная, как они в этом говорят. Thanks for watching and don't forget to subscribe. Also, if you want to support Warthog Defense, please become our member and get early access to new videos, exclusive members only videos, and become administrator in comment section. The membership link is in the description. Six rescues in six days. You know, he's doing the job every day.